So good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm really good enough that you uh, got up so early this morning. Uh, I'm pretty mediocre for most of the stuff which I'm doing. For example, I'm, I'm permanently biting fingernails when I'm under stress or I never take cold showers. I'm even not able to get a haircut in time, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, uh, I'm not sure I'm pretty mediocre to promote the stuff which I'm doing. Um, and, and, but I'm not talking about sustainability, so I have to, uh, uh, to apologize for that. Uh, and I'm sure that you are now disappointed, because sustainability is pretty boring. <laughs> so if I asked you, um, uh, how is your relationship with your girlfriend or with your husband, would you say, sustainable? <laughs> <laughs> then I would be really sorry for you. <laughs> Jonathan, how is the conference here sustainable? <laughs> so thanks to the great team and the great organization. But this is not about sustainability, it's about innovation. We can use now 30 years of planning and shaming for innovation. And we can make far, far better things. That's what I'm talking about. And that's why we can just look at traditional things. You see in the hotel here, it says, please protect the environment. Uh, don't use uh, the towels that often. Uh, uh, don't uh, use the towels only once. Or uh, please protect the environment. Reduce your water consumption. This is a very strange thing. People call it protection and they destroy less. Yeah. It would be the same if I say, please protect your wife. Beat her up in three times. <laughs> <laughs> You're not protecting, you're only destroying the less. For me, less bad, we are too many people on this planet. I want to talk about how to make things which are good instead of less bad. And sure, I want to thank you, the organizers here, for this great uh, conference. And that's why I like to come here, because this type of speed dating which you have here, you can never have somewhere else. <laughs> and, and sure, it's not about efficiency as well. Because traditionally, you talk about all the eco-efficiency thing. These buildings, for example, are completely inefficient, but very effective. Traditionally, we take things, we make things, put them into landfills, and we think it's environmental protection, and we burn some stuff. But from cradle to grave, you, the whole planet will become a graveyard. And it already looks like. You see these things here, for example. We have areas in the North Pacific where the plastic concentration is up to 40 times higher than the plankton concentration. The 12 million tons of plastic going into the oceans, and, and uh, yeah, the more seals, turtles being killed, by, and whales being killed by plastic than by anything else. So we have been growing up by, by a series of, of environmental disasters like Seveso, Boca, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. So that's why we try to be less bad. Yeah. How can you study chemistry after after the Boca, for example? We lost a whole generation of scientists with that because the talented, smart, brilliant people. Yeah, they became architects, like Rafa, for example. Yeah. So they, we have smart MBAs, we have great lawyers, but we don't have enough engineers and scientists. And the ones who studied this did it with a bad consciousness. That's why we try to be less bad, because we think it's bad to be here. Look, you see a baby, for example, making about uh, 6,000 diapers. Yeah. This is 20% of Europe's waste stream, now diapers. And because we are getting older, except the ladies here, you know, the diapers get bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we are. We try to reduce, avoid, minimize. Yeah. We are 100% evil, 90% evil, and the goal is zero. But it's not about efficiency, it's about effectiveness. This efficiency sale tells your customer, you see it in a lot of the companies here, yeah, we reduced our water consumption, we minimized our waste. Yeah. You see this in all the sustainability pressures. It tells you, don't buy my product. Yeah. Do you really need a new uh, tile? Yeah. Do you really need a new carpet? Could you wait another year to minimize your carbon footprint? Yeah. You make your customer your enemy with this type of sustainability strategy. This is guilt management. I'm talking about effectiveness. You say, hey, this is where I am. I reach already 10%. And the more you buy it, the quicker we are. That's why it's effectiveness to say, where do you want to be? You need to look at key things, like there is no energy problem, it's a carbon mismanagement problem. So, for example, you're losing topsoil more than 5,000 times more topsoil that we make. And two-thirds of all the carbon is in soil, not in oil. 
So if you lose the topsoil, forget about any reduction of carbon dioxide emissions. And topsoil is a main uh, storage place, but this is where we are. We see companies making uh, promotions like zero emissions, like Toyota. You can only be zero when you don't exist. That's the only way. <laughs> you can be only carbon neutral when you don't exist. Yeah, that's the only way, just by thinking you're not carbon neutral. Okay, Toyota had a lot of technical problems. They do something for not existing, but is this really what you want? <laughs> but, but, uh, but look at this tree here. This tree has zero emissions. This tree makes oxygen. So what about hotels which are like trees? Yeah. Why don't we make hotels which clean the air? Right now we have a massive indoor air pollution problem. We measure air quality in hotels. I can tell you the air quality in a hotel is about three to eight times worse than outside urban air here in Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. Because the stuff is never designed for indoor air use, most of the stuff. Yeah. So when we now try to steal the building to save energy, reduce the, the air exchange rate, yeah, we make a wrong problem perfect. Yeah. If you make the wrong things perfect, they're perfectly wrong. <laughs> I, by the way, coming to, to our big German group here, um, East Germany has been protecting the environment so much better than West Germany just by high efficiency. Uh, they left a lot of contaminated hot spots, but overall, the soil quality and the, and, the, and the biodiversity was so much higher in East Germany just by high efficiency. The system was so inefficient that they could destroy all the wetlands. So if you do something wrong, don't make it perfect, because then it's only perfect you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but this is where we are, we now are out for efficiency. These are new ads, yeah. What it's really sad is we see it shows little babies that our aim is zero emission. It says to tell your baby not to exist. Yeah. Yeah. But this tree is cleaning air. This tree is making oxygen. This tree is a habitat for other species. This tree is beneficial, not less bad. Yeah. The footprint thinking, which you, all the hotels are doing, is, is basically a northern type of thinking. When it's dark and cold in Sweden, you need to reduce, avoid, minimize, as you, as you don't get through the winter. Yeah. When you're walking in northern Sweden, your footprint destroys the soil. That's why you try to minimize your footprint. But when you're walking here, yeah, it means your footprint means the water stays long in the meadow. Yeah. So why don't you have a big footprint, but make it a wetland, beneficial one? But this is where we are. Yeah. We think this is beneficial when we, we, we destroy the dignity of animals a little more. This is a very new ad from them. I took it two days from the airport. <coughs> and uh, yeah, see, uh, get more out of the same resource. You want to squeeze another 50 liters out of a cow? Yeah. Yeah, do you really want to do this? If you lose dignity, you, you need to look at materials, look at very simple things. We see, for example, even toilet paper in, in hotels. I didn't want to make a specific hotel. I took a toilet paper sample from a high-speed train. It's one kilogram of toilet paper. You're contaminating 700,000 liters of water, higher than drinking water standard. Yeah. Because toilet paper is never designed for sweet sludge. Can you imagine? Every morning I fall into deep depression for 10 seconds. <laughs> it will be 20 seconds in the future. Because I go to the toilet, yeah. and, 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 and it's amazing, we feel so bad to be on this planet that there's not one label for organic which allows that our own feces can go back. Yeah. We, every day we need to pick up two grams of phosphate, every day we need to put it in the, back in the environment. If you want to put it back into agriculture, there's not one label which allows organic with our own excrements. If you do so, we have too many people on this planet. Phosphate is far more rare than oil. Yeah, there are far more radioactivity being mined by the phosphate industry that's used in all of their power plants and it's spread all over the agriculture. And the amazing thing is, yeah, uh, when we don't put our own phosphate back, we are too many. Yeah, because phosphate is only there for about 40 years. So if we don't put it back, we are too many. Just by being less bad, we are too many. Yeah. It's the same thing as people, we have so many children out of fear. Yeah. And so we, when you talk about overpopulation, when you say it's better you're not here, and people have more children. When you question their existence, they grab things. Even the poorest of the poor are generous and friendly when they feel accepted and safe. But when you tell it's better not to exist, then people become greedy. So you reach the opposite in sustainability as this type of skill management. And sure, the buildings are not designed for human use. <coughs> you can do so as now is the most relevant children's disease. So why don't we do? Come together and make a hotel where the indoor air quality is better than outside air because the technology is there. 
So if we, we just here we gave up working exclusive for companies because we want that we can do this together. Yeah. And what we do is we analyze stuff. So we put things into into a, a glass a, a glass box and we look what is off casing from there. We look what comes out of some thing. And all the peaks which you see are chemicals off casing. Because the carpet industry has been looking at the environment much earlier, the peaks are relatively low compared to children's toys, for example. Yeah, yeah really, they're much cleaner because the carpet industry has been looking at off casing very early. But we try to take natural materials because we think that it's less bad. But God didn't design the sheep for a hotel. Yeah? So that's when you try to make a sheep into a hotel carpet, it's a bigger problem. You see here, the peaks are bigger. Yeah? And because the sheep is not designed for red wine. Yeah? So when you have a 100% wool carpet, you don't have a wool carpet. You just have a Teflon carpet with some wool inside. It's called scotch guard. The peaks are higher and far more carcinogens of gassing from a, a natural carpet than from a synthetic one when you try to make a natural carpet into a, 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 a sheep into a carpet. Yeah. Because it's not, we need to reinvent that system for that. You see wallpapers, for example, the off casing, yeah, half of all the houses in the Western world have PVC, soft PVC wallpapers, off casing, plasticizers, which destroy fertility dramatically. They, if you look at the men in this room, including me, compared to our fathers, we only have the men. Uh, uh, Paul McCartney knew that already in, in 1986, yeah. Remember, rested yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. <laughs> so, so see, these wallpapers are not there because they are sealing the walls and they don't allow an uh, exchange of moisture. Twenty percent of the houses in Europe have mold problems, massive mold problems, yeah, and it's it's caused asthma as well. I really want to say it's better not to exist to these little kids. And that's what we do. We don't have humans anymore in companies. We only have human raw materials. Yeah human resource departments. If you only do something differently in your company, change the human resource department. Because they're humans. We give up human dignity with environmental discussion because we think it's better not to be here. But look at ants. People traditionally say, please protect the environment. Take the stairs, for example. But I can show you, if you take a 40-year-old vegetarian and you take that lady and you take the calorie consumption of that person, you compare how much energy does it take to take the stairs compared to the elevator, you see the stairs take five times more energy. Yeah. Because to make human calories about five times more energy intensive. So never take the stairs. Yeah. When you want to protect the environment, take the elevator. <laughs> and, and, so you, and the benefit is that you die a little earlier as well. <laughs> 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 That's why I, I want to show you a picture of ants. There are 4,500 species of ants in the rainforest. Yeah. Did you ever hear about an overpopulation problem of ants? Did you ever hear about an overpopulation problem of trees? There are 600 billion trees, of, uh, trees still left in the Amazon region. 600 billion. Yeah, they don't reduce their water footprint or whatever. Nothing like that. They're beneficial. These ants, for example, make sure that rainforest exists. If you take the weight of the ants, that here are the ants and here are the humans. The weight of ants is four times bigger. And because ants never take elevators, they always take the stairs. Yeah. And ants, only three to six months, they equal in their calorie consumption about 30 billion people. So we are not too many. We are too stupid. Yeah. We are not good enough. We, may, we are making waste. Yeah. And as long as you make waste, we are too many. Yeah. So that's why it's not about zero waste, zero emission. Even when you think about zero waste, you still think about waste. Yeah. It's like when you t I tell you, don't think about a pink elephant, you think about a pink elephant. Yeah. That's why, yeah, let's not reduce, minimize, avoid, let's celebrate human footprint on this planet. Not like Al Gore who says it's a moral issue, the greenhouse effect. No gold is more crucial for saving the planet than stabilizing human population. In Israel we say when you save one life, you save the earth. Yeah. Here it says the more you kill the better. Yeah. Yeah, stabilizing human population. It's not a moral issue, because not only Germans forget moral issues immediately when they're under stress. Yeah. So if you make it a moral issue, it's never there when you need it. Yeah. So that's why it's just a quality thing. Yeah. A building which stinks is just a bad building. Yeah. 
we have a quality problem in architecture. That's why I'm so glad this reference is doing that. So this is why it's about doing the right thing, yeah? not yeah, doing things right. Yeah? And in the Netherlands, the whole country is changing into cradle to cradle because people understand easily what efficiency against effectiveness is. Yeah? When your wife is angry about you, 50 rows is completely inefficient but very effective. Yeah? So the country is built on tulips, completely inefficient. Yeah? Well, think about Van Gogh, for example. Efficient, the first dot com, no. Yeah, but very effective to show, to express what you feel. Or take a lipstick. Yeah. A woman in the Netherlands eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick during her lifetime. <laughs> this is not really accurate because we cannot calculate how much gets kissed away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I can tell you just looking around here in that room, that the lipstick completely inefficient but amazingly effective. <laughs> so, so to define what we can. A, B, C, X. A is ideal, B is principally okay, C uh, can be tolerated, and X needs to go out. So I'm not free of, if I invite you for dinner, yeah, then we can say it's free of chicken, that doesn't help you at all. Yeah. So we need to define what is in there, yeah. positively. So it makes sense to reduce the use of, of uh, uh, of oil and fossil fuels, but where is your positive footprint with making hotels? Yeah. It's only less bad. And for guilt management, you say, say let me, you better don't go into a hotel. Yeah. Could you really not stay at home yet yeah, more? So look at the tree in spring, no reduction, no avoidance, no minimization. Now it's yeah, every waste equals food, using current dollar income and celebrating diversity. Completely inefficient, but very effective. We distinguish between two cycles, the stuff which gets consumed, like food, like detergents, like shoe soles, like breakfasts, are designed to go in biological cycles. Things which are just used as a service, like washing machines, like windows, like carpets, yeah, are going to technical cycle. Because you don't consume a washing machine, you don't consume a TV set, you only use it as a service. So we are not consumers of TV sets. So to give you an example, people traditionally uh, if you make these fabrics, <coughs> like you have it here in, on your chair, these fabrics are, you know, the pieces you cut off are so toxic that they need to go into hazardous waste incineration in Europe. You know? How stupid, because when you sit on a chair, you actually eat the chair, you take it up, you inhale it. Here you can see the new Lufthansa fabrics which we do. They're soft and they're nice, and you just can try them out. But you see, you know, and this is what we do, we, we do innovation. You know? and we can make much more beautiful things. So the pieces you cut off can go into, 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 uh, in, into gardening. And it's not only KLM or Lufthansa, yeah, it's as well Thai Airlines, for example, using all fabrics, because indoor air quality in airplanes is critical. So, and the new generation of these fabrics is not just not stinking, it's positively cleaning the air, like a leaf from a tree is cleaning the air. Technical cycles, you first need to take things out, sure, but that doesn't help you that much. You need to define positively what you have. I want to show you an example of good baby, and you'll see a little video from that as well. If, yeah, so you do upholstery beds, the first beds with Alping in the Netherlands designed for indoor use. Can you imagine? First bed? Yeah. So and we do definitely <coughs> do beds as services. You don't need to buy a bed as a hotel company anymore, it's just uh, by the use of the bed for defined use periods. Yeah. You see this with Alping, for, you, you see this with Mosa, yeah, these are ceramic tiles where you no longer sell the tiles yourself, the use of the tiles. They have reversible glues, so the glues are shrinking and you can remove it, uh, and so you can change the bathroom every two years if you want. Yeah. It's about celebrating abundance, not minimizing things. You can see it's the first TV set by Philips, which we designed for indoor use compared to any other TV set. These marks which you see in the peaks are only for control. This is the first TV set designed for interior air quality. When you see a ship rock, for example, yeah, companies which are here as well, they, yeah, these are, these are cradle, cradle materials. Yeah. Company, chemical industry supporting this is a triple top line, not a triple bottom line. We have office furniture where you're no longer selling the furniture, you're selling the use of the furniture. Now the company uh, which runs the hotel can calculate the cost exactly and the